Barakallahu feek. That was a great speech that shed light on the pivotal role that women play in the Islamic faith. Next, we have Umeza Iram, who will be presenting on a topic, the scholars in Islam and their contribution to the Islamic community. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Have you ever wondered what is the origin of the word algebra? Who originated the concept of quarantine? Who was the first man to find out the radius of the earth? Well, the answer to all these questions lies in the golden age of Islam, a period when Islamic civilization experienced many moments of profound brilliance. The Abbasid era was a beacon of intellectual curiosity, fostering an environment where the thirst for knowledge knew no bounds. The light of wisdom illuminated the realms of mathematics, astronomy, philosophy, medicine, and many other disciplines. Caliph Harun al-Rashid, a prominent ruler of the Abbasid dynasty, established the House of Wisdom, Bayt al-Hikmah, in the wide density of Baghdad. It was a major public academy and intellectual center where scholars of diverse backgrounds converged. The motivating force of this civilization was its Islamic faith, and its language was Arabic. Nearly all of the philosophical and scientific works accessible to the scholars were rendered into Arabic. Historian John, George Satin noted, from the second half of the 8th to the end of the 11th century, Arabic was the scientific, the progressive language of mankind. The Quran depicted the relationship between nature and man, and this inspired the Muslim scholars to embark on a quest for learning and discovery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, chapter 41, verse 53, we will show you our signs in the horizon and in yourself until you are convinced that the revelation is the truth. One of the genius scholars of this period is Al-Khwarizmi. He is the father of algebra. Yes, friend, he is the person to thank for all your confusions in algebra. In fact, the word algebra is derived from the Arabic word algebra, which was a part of the title of Khwarizmi's profound book, Kitab Al-Jabr wa Al-Makbala. Ibn Sina was another prominent physician and philosopher belonging to this age. He wrote the medical encyclopedia, Canon of Medicine. The principles he laid out around a millennium ago are still relevant in broad cry of today. He was quite the visionary. After all, he came up with the concept of quarantine. Another brilliant scholar whom we all should be so thankful to is Ibn al Haytham. He invented the camera. He was a pioneering scientific thinker who made important contributions to the understanding of vision, optics, and light. He is rightly referred to as the father of modern optics. Friends, calculating the Earth's radius over a thousand years ago was no mean feat. Al-Baironi, a renowned astronomer, achieved this very feat. He obtained a simple formula for measuring the Earth's radius. He was also the first to think of the possibility of the Earth revolving around the sun. Respected audience, these are but a handful of scholars from the plethora of scholars belonging to the Golden Age. It is noteworthy that the Abbasid era not only consisted of Muslim scholars, but also Christian Jews and other faiths. As I delved deeper into the history of the Golden Age of Islam, what struck me deeply was that despite the tremendous impact these contributions had on both the Islamic community and the world at large, the vibrant history of this period is often not brought to the limelight. The various collections of Arabic manuscripts too are still preserved and are being translated into English. Many of the philosophical and scientific works too are preserved. Many of the ideas that were attributed to scholars like Galileo or Newton were actually available much earlier to the works of these Islamic scholars. For instance, the initial development of modern science did not occur in Italy with the spectacular work of Galileo, but in the Abbasid era, several centuries earlier. Have any of us ever paused and pondered why despite the staggering achievements, all these praised blazers are not rightfully honored? Why are they pretty much non-existent in the present intellectual city? city? It's about time we continue and harness this legacy of knowledge and yearn to leave an indelible mark for generations to come. U.S. President D. Dwight rightly observed, civilization owes to the Islamic world some of its most important tools and achievements. 
the Muslim genius has added much to the culture of all people. Jazakallah khairan, assalamu alaikum.